Hello YouTube, you from the bedroom here, you guitar junkie. So I'm going to run through the three most inexpensive guitars that I think are great. You get a lot of guitar for your money, big bang for your buck. I'm going to use, yes, my Little Wing backing track because it's a constant loop. It doesn't have a start and a finish. And I'll grab all three guitars and try to play the same thing at the same time. <laughs> no, not really. Here we go. Messed up the beginning yet again. Try it again. Did it again. Under pressure. I gotta wait. Wait for it to cycle. To cycle. without a strap. No, I don't need a strap. I feel like it's pulling off. Pulling off me lap. Me lap mug. Here we go. Timing is everything. I say it all the time. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for your patience. Let's take a brief commercial break. For this intermission. Get on there. Okay.
have it. All right. So, turn it on. Clip it on. Plug it in, plug it in. All right. So, in no particular order, really. So, while I have this one in my hand, I've seen this on sale, Guitar Center's website. Same thing, it's either a MS-450 or an MS-470, just like this one. Locking tune is, look at that fingerboard. Quilted maple top, but I believe the one I saw was red, $149. These are still within the $200 to $300 range in Guitar Center. But if you find the ad under the Mitchell brand, because it is a house brand for both Guitar Center and Musician's Friend, they have to meet the price. So pound for pound, I saw one identical to this in red. That was stunning at the Guitar Center store. So yeah, go in and have that little look, find the ad, take a screenshot, <clears throat> present it to them. You can walk out with a fine instrument. This has beautiful wood binding going all the way around the neck and the body. So contoured knobs. You've got a pull push. And you can see how it's contoured into the body. One, two, three. And even the toggle switch. So string through design. You get that brilliant telecaster sustain. Just an amazing guitar. And they come a long way from when they first started making them. You got a belly cut here. You got this nice indention here. And you've got a little bit of a curved contour right there. So that's one. Two. And again, in no particular order. Just the way I picked them up and the way I laid them down. The Leo James. Now, I just checked this, I'd say within an hour ago, and this particular model that they were showing, and they do show it with a sharp pointed horn. Fortunately, I didn't get that. I got a, a nice soft round horn. I really like that a whole lot, a whole lot better, a whole lot more. With this Tiger Maple veneer top, same thing with the other one that's a quilted maple veneer top, not a cap. And no splitting here, straight up. And this one here has an ebony fingerboard, unlike the Mitchell having a rosewood. So that's what really caught my attention. And it looked nothing like the picture. In the picture, this looked like it was really like a pinkish kind of sweet cherry, almost too red. And this looked too dark, but it is a nice charcoal kind of burst tiger maple. And I changed the um, knobs and the pickups. <clears throat> the, I, just, I just wanted to put Teslas in here because I just think they sound great and I want to have a guitar that when I grab it, I want it to sound as good as my other guitars and not have a guitar that just sounds okay. The other pickups were okay. But I've done that, and then I put locking tuners on. You know, Geiger. I use Geiger on all my guitars. So this was selling for $179 when I purchased it, and then I started making a video on it, and the price went down to 169 now as of today they said currently out of stock they didn't say 
it's unavailable anymore. They could say that at the time you watch this video. And then, of course, everyone knows how I feel about Holly Benton. So, this was selling last time I looked, brand new, 266. Keep in mind also, though, that you're paying $70, $80 for shipping for this guitar. So that's why I always suggest that you buy two. But they're so inexpensive, you can afford two for the price of one. And you're getting two guitars sent to you for the same shipping price. And I bought this as a B stock. Now, as I was getting ready to buy it, at that time it was 260. And then I have a, a, another long drawn out video <clears throat> how I kind of messed up on the order. And I, I added this to a previous order and then I messed up and I had to cancel that order and reorder it. And when I went to reorder it, they had a B stock and this one, from what I remember, was 205 as a B stock. And you could look at my Holly Benton B stock Wednesday, where I'm showing more than one guitar because I probably, I probably purchased at least 15, give or take, 15 maybe or more Holly Benton guitars. And I could honestly say that more than half of those were all B stocks, and I didn't have an issue with any of them. This one I got it, I looked it over again. These are just regular reading glasses, so I put on something that's like another hundred. Like if this is two fifty, I'll put on like three fifty from the dollar store, and I'll just look it over like I've got a magnifying glass. And when I got this at the time. I had marks back here, and I mentioned it before, I had a blemish in the clear coat up here. And it was just like, it just was a, a, a they messed up when they sprayed it. So I just, you know, <laughs> wiped off the marks that I had here. And the biggest thing was the blemish. So what I did was I taped off the back of the neck, and I sanded down the clear coat. And then I used stainless steel, like triple zero grit on it to smoothing it out. And then I just used my oil, my uh, staining oil. Or I may have even used gunstock oil at one time. And it, now it's like a, a beautiful satin neck. And I just, you know, I taped it off to make it look neat. And I also put Geiker. Marking tuners. And again, like I said, they make so many brands. So, you know, Geica makes so many different styles. This is the vintage style with the, um, the backing with the two screws, unlike the Leo James that I showed you. And you could also find them with different key pegs. So you could just find the key peg that matches your guitar. Like these were almost identical to the Grovers that you would get on a Gibson. So you hit the nice round ones. And when I, hold on a minute. Yeah. So when I ordered them, I made sure that I had the screw going in the right direction, facing down, not facing to the left. And they really do look like Grover. And I had to look at them again and uh, just to show you, they're Geiger and they're great tuners. Now, I, they're inexpensive, but they're not cheap. Now, now what I mean by that, there's, they're inexpensive, they're very affordable, but they're not cheap, you know, crappy made locking tuners. They're really well made locking tuners for a fraction of what you would get if you bought a brand like, you know, the Grover locking tuners or whatever. And this thing here, um, 
has a triple A, I think it is. Tiger maple top, not a veneer, a top. It's about, they say it's six, six millimeters. And it's not a veneer, it's not a photo finish, it's, a, it's the real deal. It's chambered, so it's lighter. You've got your S shape here, so it's easy access to get, which all three of them do. This one here is just super thin, so you could really get down to those higher frets without going nuts. This one here is, again, super thin, so you can get down to it. This is as standard as you can get to a full, because those are thinner bodies. This is a full-size LP style body. And again, with a nice curved horn. With stainless steel frets, that's the only difference between this, this one and those two. As far as everything else that I've mentioned, this is chambered. This has a graph tech nut. I believe the other two might have a graph tech nut as well. I, I don't know for sure. These have Tesla pickups. That's why I put a pair in the Leo James because they just sound amazing. I got lucky with the Mitchell with the Zebra pickups. They sound fantastic. And I changed the knobs again. So stainless steel frets. And I, I say it all the time, why can't every guitar be made nowadays with stainless steel frets? And for that case, for that matter, an ebony fingerboard, come on, really, an ebony fingerboard, $179, went down to $169, now it just says currently out of stock. So if you see that come back, I would grab it from Amazon and... If you don't like it, if you got Amazon Prime, man, it's free shipping to your house and free returns. Same thing with the Mitchell. You're not sure? Go into the guitar, any guitar center around where you are. Look for one of those because now they're made 10 times better than the first batch that they started in the 90s. And you'll, you'll say, wow, this really plays good. You could buy it from the store and if you could find the identical model on the, their website, they got to meet the price. And then the Holly Benton. You know, this was, again, B-Stock, $205. It normally goes for $266. But the only downside to this is that, yes, you're paying $70 to $80 for shipping. So whenever I buy from Holly Benton, I always buy two guitars. So I get two guitars for price of one. And if I don't like the other guitar, I put it on a Craigslist. And... Now, so many people are learning about the Holly Benton guitars. Uh, just like it, it, it took a while for Firefly to take off from uh, Amazon. The Holly Bentons, you know, now, now the Leo James are popping up. And then you're getting the Ert with stainless steel frets. Those are popping up. The, sit, the, the, the Centaur, Centstar, something like that. Saying that's ill. So, you know, there are some options, but this thing here is for my Holly Benton single cut. This is a 550 um, Deluxe 2 on there. All of them made, you know, overseas. I believe this one's Indonesia. One of the other ones are Indonesia. One might even say China. You know, you're saying, dude, why don't you just look right now? This one doesn't even say where it's made, the Leo James. But I know that the guy that owns the company is Chinese. I saw a YouTube video where he was um, another YouTuber, ran into him at some kind of guitar show, some kind of NAM show. And this one here says handcrafted in China. So... A lot of great guitars, and let's face it, even the American-made guitars, they're being made from a computer now. They're not being routed and cut by hand. They put a block of wood in the CNC, I think they're called machines, type in the computer, makes the cuts, and they put it together. And a lot of the stuff 
and a lot of the parts are coming from China. And you might find, like my, for example, Charvel, uh, it says assembled in USA, but everything came from China. So, you know, there's a lot of argu arguing, arguments going on with uh, you know, USA-made guitars like Fender and uh, Gibson as opposed to anything coming from China or overseas, North Korea, no, yeah, South Korea, Indonesia, Taiwan, Vietnam, China. It's all the same thing. Uh, and the guys that are crying, the, the Gibson guys, they're, they're crying over the USA Gibsons and the copycats that are coming out of AliExpress, VH Gate, and Reverb. But they don't, you don't hear a peep about the Epiphones that are, in my opinion, better. I'd rather spend money because you're spending more money on an Epiphone for the name. And I'd rather have one of those than a USA Gibson because I'm saving a lot more money and I'm almost getting, almost getting the same guitar. But you are paying more for an Epiphone because you're paying for the name and you're still not getting stainless steel frets. So, yeah, that's my biggest complaint. So thanks for watching, everybody. Um, have a good day. Uh, holidays are coming, so... Everyone, I hope everyone has a happy holiday and see you the next time. Bye-bye.